What's going on everybody? The Digital Dungeon Master here with some of my DDM tricks of the trade. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing a game, I'll get questions. Hey Dave, how do I get this map? You know, where do I find this map to download? Why do you have a version and how did you get this version of a map that has no locations, no numbers, no secret doors? And this is what this video is about. And I've learned a lot over the years. I've learned a lot since uh, I've started DMing. And seeing that I mainly Dungeon Master Online, I've had to adapt and learn how to take maps that have locations, secret doors, you know, the lines where the corridor maybe goes under another level uh, of the, the dungeon that you're in or cave system. So I've learned how to hide all of those blemishes. Not blemishes, but... Uh, you know, locales, we'll call them. And I take a lot of pride in the games that I run. I really do. I try to give my players the best experience that they could have. And I think that hiding all of the locations and secret doors and stuff is, is one way that you can have uh, a better experience for your players. Because I, as a player... I don't think I would like to see a bunch of maps with location numbers and doors and stuff because that would kind of really lead to metagaming. And, you know, if you're a DM out there, if you're using a map that has a secret door location on it all of a sudden, if the players are going to see it, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that one of the players is going to say, I will do a investigation or perception check in this room to see if I find anything where the last 20 or 25 rooms are and they never even brought up investigation or perception so hide them it doesn't take that long you know it really doesn't and plus when you do that i think your players will probably appreciate the game a little bit more and they'll probably even thank you for it so hey let's get rid of that metagaming right not saying that all players metagame but even I've I've done it on occasion. If I'm presented something, it's inevitable that I'm probably going to try to uh, use and abuse that in some way, shape, or form. So the map behind me is the Ambergal Estate from the Ghost of Dragon Spear Castle. I love the Ghost of Dragon Spear Castle, and it's one of the the campaigns that I'm running on Saturday nights. And this is a module that came out in book form only it came out in 2014 it was a gen con exclusive and there was nothing digital for it you know and and uh, in fact uh one of my viewers said that they had a few left on the table and asked me if i wanted one i mean does a bear shit in the woods of course i want i want one of those ghosts of dragon spear castles so he got it for me and sent it to me and there was no fold-out maps or nothing like that. So I had to make the PDF for it. There was no... You know, there may be something on D&D Classics now. Usually they're pretty good about getting things out a couple years after they're released. So, But I made this PDF. Uh, I made it in a, in a huge file size just so I could, you know, make these maps and stuff. I use Paint.net for this video. Usually I use Photoshop. But most people, you know, they... They just don't have access to Photoshop. It's pretty expensive. I think the, uh, the suite's like 50 bucks a month, but you get access to everything. But a lot of people can't do that, so that's why in this video I want to use Paint.net. It's free, and I'll have the link down in the description below so you can you know, download it and all that other good stuff. And Paint.net is nothing even comparable to Photoshop. But I will say this. I've been using it for about five, six years now. And there are tons of extensions out there, and I probably have a couple hundred now. And you can have something pretty comparable to Photoshop. It's not going to have all the bells and whistles, but it, it is pretty nice. And it's the user interface is simple to use, and it's really new user-friendly. It, it really is. So the, the map on the left has all of the locations and stuff like that. The map on the right behind me, that has everything stripped off of it except for you know a couple of the the number 10 c's and stuff that are not even on the map and fog of war is going to hide those anyway so i didn't really see the need to take those off but you could take those off super easy anyway so all i do guys 
seriously, all I do is just cover up these numbers. I don't paint. I'm not an artist. My name is Zovia. You know, I, I, I can't even draw a stick figure. Ask my patrons that. They will tell you. Because usually when I send out the show notes every month to the, the patrons, I draw stick figures with little text bubbles, and they're horrible. So I there's no way that I could ever draw a map like this by hand. I'm just covering it up, guys. I just cover it up. And all I do, and you're going to see in the video, which is sped up uh, five times the speed, so you'll be able to see what I do. And plus, you can stop it and pause it. But I start in one corner of the map, and I just work my way around. And I look for areas that are not covered with numbers, and I try to take that area, I copy it, and then I paste it on its own individual layer to cover up all of the locations and doors and stuff. Some of these things can get pretty tricky. And you'll see in the video that there's a couple times that I didn't like certain things the way they looked. So I basically deleted the layer and start over again. But I didn't want to take any of that out. I wanted to show you guys exactly how I do this. And like I said, it doesn't take very long. I mean, it may take you maybe an hour or two, a couple hours maybe the first couple times. But once you do this more and more, You'll get better at it. You'll get more efficient. You'll figure out some shortcuts. You'll get better with paint.net. And you'll, I busted this map out in about 45 minutes or so. And I think it turned out really good. There's a couple of spots that I probably could have taken a little bit more time uh, to do. But it, but it was definitely good enough. So, But the main thing is, is take advantage of the layers. Everything is layers. So if you need to go back and change anything, you can always just sift through the layers to find out which area or which number of doors is covered up, and then you can modify that layer or delete it and start over. But that's the key. Use a lot of layers. So I hope you guys enjoy it. The video is sped up, like I said, five times. I've got some pretty rocking music in there. And down in the comments section, all you GMs out there, all you DMs, do you guys do the same thing that I do? And if you do, what kind of what kind of tricks, what kind of tools do you guys use? And if you have any questions about what to do, hey, ask a question. I always I always uh I always watch the comment section. So enjoy it, guys, and don't forget paint.net will be down there in the description below. So until next time, everybody, happy gaming. Keep it savage.